Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about the Colossus. Push Colossus, for God's sake. It is actually so important. I've said this before in my beginner's guide, and I'm going to say it again, and I really want to reiterate it. I guess we can treat this video as kind of like a Colossus guide, Colossus overview. What exactly should you do with it? However, before all of that, let me kind of like talk about Colossus, the purpose of Colossus, and which rooms we should kind of rush. And so with that in mind, let's jump right into the video. So as you can see, this is my my Colossus here, it is currently still level 3 bridge. In the bridge, it's essentially just kind of like your entire base level. So the maximum level of the other rooms can only be the maximum level of the bridge. So if your bridge is level 3 like mine is, then the maximum level of the other rooms can only be level 3. And so this is actually really important because like one of the key things that the bridge is tied to is the resource room. And the resource room is tied to like the level of the resource stage that you can farm. And so from there you can already see like this is going to be like super important. But yeah, back to the bridge. So the bridge can can only be upgraded once you pass like certain points in the story. If I click upgrade over here, we have this guy over here and this is essentially what we need. So level 2 at 212, level 3 at 47 and level 4 at 614. I'm actually almost about to hit 614, however it's not actually what is limiting my bridge. So if you count it all up, it looks like we can only go up to Colossus level 4. However, there is a 4th central plug-in in the 8th world. Honestly, there isn't too much to it, I would really highly recommend you push to at least 47 before you start start grinding any resource stages and then from there you can definitely grind a bit and then go to 614 and then grind a bit again. I personally think that the gap between 212 and 47 are just like way too small and so yeah that's kind of like one of your first assignments push to 47 at least and try to get to level 3. Alright guys so as we can tell bridge is our top priority in upgrading. So then let's have a look at the other rooms. Over here you can see that we have a lounge, a cafe, a rec room and a bar. If you have not figured it out yet these are kind of like your leisurely rooms but they are not actually available since the start of the game unless you do like some little speech thing on over like the telephone. So over here, you guys already know, this is like the text messaging system. And so you actually have to talk to Angel, Dove, and Zoya. Talking to Angel, Dove, and Zoya, and then going into the base to actually have a chat with them will actually get you like those rooms. And so these rooms don't serve like any crazy purpose. They're essentially just to like house your furniture. So if I click into one of them, you can actually see that I've kind of like butchered it. This one to me is kind of like a mood generator. So yeah, it is what it is. I can't do anything about it. I need that mood, you know what I'm saying? All right, so now we've got the lounge, cafe, rec room, and bar covered. Let's have a look at the more important ones. Speaking of mood, actually, so this guy is up here and you've got the Colossus mood points info. Essentially, mood is capped by your maximum bridge level in which I have a level three and so I can only have a maximum of 6,000 mood. Currently, I have 4289 mood and this is like put together by all of these guys over here. Mood is a really straightforward thing. It says exactly what it does down here. Improve mood for Aurorians to give you gift and increase visits from friends. So sometimes this could be Lumamba, sometimes this could be Nitium. So honestly, it is really important to get this guy up as well as hit like these milestones. All right, with that out of the way, let me have a quick talk about these guys up here. So this blue one over here is Firefly. So this is essentially what we need to actually construct or upgrade rooms. So for example, if I wanted to upgrade this exploration from level one to level two, then I would have to consume some Fireflies. On the other hand, over here, we have Lumina, which is kind of like your power supply. And what I mean by that is that it's kind of like your total energy or like your total electricity costs. So right now, I actually have 160 out of 400 it means that I have too much electricity or power and so it actually means that I screwed up and I shouldn't have upgraded so much and so these two are actually dependent on these rooms over here the Lumina grid the Lumina grid is essentially like your power supply of the Colossus I've got an unlocked bridge level 4 over here but it's essentially just like another Lumina grid so these guys do two things for us first of all they generate fireflies but second of all they increase our like electricity Lumina capacity so if I click into one of these guys let's go into the facility message and as you can see our Lumina can go up 120 from this guy if I upgrade it it'll go up to like 160 something like that Oop, actually 170 so the thing about the Lumina grid is that it's actually the lowest priority because it doesn't actually give you like any real benefits the only benefits it has is like to help you build the other rooms in addition to that over capping on Lumina like what I did here is a massive mistake if you do have the drones and the materials to build other things the other things come first like literally everything else comes first and so that's probably like the biggest tip that I can give you if you do not need to build or upgrade your Lumina grids do not do it it. Only do it when you have run out of capacity over here. Okay, with that being said, let's move on to the other ones over here. And these are kind of like your functional rooms. These actually kind of serve a purpose. And I would say that they are very, very important. A lot of the people that are rushing are actually rushing for stuff like this. So let's start with what I think is one of the most important ones, which is the prison pillar. I think this is like the first room you get. And essentially it just like generates energy for you or like stamina. And so the more you upgrade it, the faster it's going to come. So yeah, that's kind of it. So as you can imagine, like getting more stamina means more progression. This is a direct impact on your progression. And 
and so I would say that it is probably like the top priority. Next we've got the resource room over here and essentially this guy affects a whole bunch of stuff like the first one the most important one in my opinion is the resource raid level and what that means is that the highest resource raid level that you can do is limited by your resource station up here. In addition to that upgrading the resource station also upgrades like your carrier storage and carrier recovery but all they do really is like save you time and it doesn't like really impact your efficiency of like spending your stamina. So yeah that's kind of like a non-issue you really want it because you want to be able to farm the later stages because they are more efficient. All right, that's it for the resource stage. Let's move on to the starlight. Now, this is an interesting one because this actually gives you like a lot of opportunity to max out a lot of characters will actually break through. At the very least, you can get like the first two stages of breakthrough for your characters. So this guy over here, claim three out of 120. Let me show you. This is Hearthstone. And so what exactly Hearthstone is used for is for your breakthrough in your Aurorians. If you guys don't know what breakthroughs are, it's essentially like your dupe system. However, the first two breakthroughs do not need dupes. So breakthrough one is Hearthstone and it always gives you HP. Breakthrough 2 gives you defense and it's also always Hearthstones. However, from 3 to 5, it is Hearthstones and a dupe shard. And so if we have a facility in here that's actually generating Hearthstone, that's like really freaking good. It means that we can actually eventually break through for like all of our characters that at least the first two levels. This one is definitely another priority. However, breakthrough only impacts like your defense and your HP unless you do have dupes. And so in my opinion, whilst it's extremely important, I think it's worth a little bit less. I reckon the Prism Pillar, Resource Room and Starlight are probably like the most important ones here. All right, after that, we have Dispatch down here. And so this guy is essentially like your dispatch system. Like a lot of games have this. You get a whole bunch of stages and then you can send like your offices over and it doesn't actually take them out of action. This is a really good thing because like some other games, like if you put characters on dispatch, you can't actually use them in combat. And that's kind of dumb. So like Countersight is one of them. Genshin Impact was another one, but they changed it. But yeah, this is also a very, very important. Honestly, they are also important. And which is why I'm saying push Colossus. This one gives you freaking Lumamba, right? A five-star mission gives you 30 or up to 30 Lumamba. Honestly, guys, like stuff like this, if you do that like twice a day, I've got two of them, you could like theoretically fund a whole bunch of your refreshes. And on top of that, you also get Ascension mats and that is just so freaking good. So whilst this system is extremely important, I would say it could be at a lower priority. And the reason is because like the upgrades to this room, especially in the early game, a lot of the time when you go on dispatch, like you're probably only gonna be able to get like 21 out of 30 or like 22 out of 30. And so how exactly do I feel about the dispatch office in terms of priority? It's pretty freaking important as well. So I think level three, and I only have level two right now, but level three is a really great breakpoint. And the reason for that is because it actually guarantees two five-star quests. And as you saw before, those five-star quests gave a potential 30 Lumamba each. However, on top of that, moving an Aurorian in is also pretty freaking big. And the reason for that is because when you move another Aurorian in, it actually lets you speed up your regain dispatch attempts down here. And so as you can see down here, I have a maximum of like six remaining dispatch attempts. And of these six, I have none left. And so if I do upgrade this room to level three and then I put another Aurorian in there, I will be able to get these dispatch attempts faster. Honestly, in the long run, it's really freaking good. It's really hard to place priorities, to be honest, like on these like six rooms because all of them are just like really freaking good. I would say in the four rooms so far, I would say prism and resource are top priority, then dispatch and then starlight. All right, lastly, we've got exploration. So this guy is directly impacting like your secret territory. So this guy essentially just generates you MS, which you use to actually run through secret territory. If you run out of MS, then you can't run secret territory. However, if you guys have seen my previous video, the secret territory guide, you'll realize that you don't really need too much MS to actually do secret territory. The moment I unlocked secret territory, I was able to finish it like a couple of hours later. I did not rely on any of like the MS regeneration and I just did it with the amount that they gave me. All right, so if we upgrade this one, if I slam this guy over here, you'll see that we get text fragment production up by 120%. And we also unlock more secret territory stages. So in terms of this one down here, unlock more secret territory stages. I actually don't know what this one does. And I've asked around and nobody seems to know. And I know it says going from level one to level two here, which implies that I didn't actually unlock it. But I did see through my friend's account that actually nothing changed. And so it's for that reason that if you have already finished secret territory for this week, then I would say this is bottom priority out of the five. However, just because it's bottom priority doesn't mean you should like put it off until like four years later. If anything, just to be cautious, you probably do want this unlocked before like the weekly ends and your secret territory then actually like resets and then perhaps there are more like new stages and then all I hear is more text frags you know what I'm saying like it sounds good to me but yeah like generally I would say because the rewards of secret territory is like generally like your bond and friendship stuff and yes they do give stats and all of that but if you can clear up to level five of secret territory then you should be able to clear all of the important items out of the shop and that's your star flares pretty much you can actually clear out the star flares like really fast so like you don't really need this Everything 
else is kind of like a bonus like the furniture and like the friendship gifts and stuff like that and so it's for that reason i would say that the exploration one is probably lowest priority out of the five so the last one i want to talk about is this one down here which is the workshop and yeah i know i haven't unlocked it yet but like this is a really important one to be honest because what the workshop does is that it actually lets you craft ascension materials for your characters honestly this is really important because like a lot of the time you might be like grinding some of the stages for ascension materials and they cost so much stamina if you had the ability to instead craft some ascension materials then you could save a lot of stamina in the long run so i don't have it right now but i do think it's like a priority to at least unlock it all right guys honestly over time i do think that it's more important to actually upgrade your colossus than it is to push the story yes i'm saying to push the story but you want to push the story to upgrade your colossus so on that note let me give a summary of like the prioritization of the different rooms number one of course is the bridge because you can't upgrade anything else without it number two is your resource station because it allows you to grind more efficient stages thereby saving you stamina number three i would say is the prism pillar or the dispatch really depends on like some people some people reckon it's prism pillar some people think it's dispatch if you have a lot of characters it's dispatch for sure but like i think prism pillar is also really good after that in my opinion it's probably going to be the workshop even though i haven't got it unlocked yet but the ability to craft like ascension materials is just so massive like i think it is better than both of these ones here and then after that we've got the starlight which gives you in essence like more hp and more defense to each of your units and then lastly in my opinion is exploration so it does apparently give you more stages in secret territory but like we don't know what that looks like yet so if you have already cleared secret territory or you've already like engaged it then i would say this is like bottom priority however next week when we do get the reset we might finally realize that you know oh this is probably like one of the best ones and so for like the exploration honestly like i would say it right now it's at the bottom getting more stages in secret territory could mean that we get more text fragments but again despite that it is only used for friendship gifts and stories so it's kind of like meh the stat gain you get is like really negligible compared to the rest of them tldr you guys should really be pushing it as well as the story after you hit chapter 5 like the start of chapter 5 there isn't really anything like to push your story for what some people are doing is that they're taking a break at like chapter 5 so that they can actually build up the rest of their team however what i would actually recommend is that you try keep pushing especially the 6-4 and try to get to the level 4 bridge getting that level 4 bridge is just going to give you upgrades to all of these guys and i think in the long run it's going to like get you a lot of resources i guess my opinion is that if you don't need to upgrade your units then you shouldn't because you want to be pushing the story to be able to get the higher level colossus to be able to get more resources in the long run all right guys i think that's actually it i don't know if there's any more to cover about the colossus so if you do have any questions about the colossus like do drop a question down in the comments below either some smart person or myself like we'll come and answer it don't worry and so i guess with that being said let's start wrapping up the video i've got a secret message for you guys and that is push colossus i don't know how many times i can say it, but like colossus is so important and so if you could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate that it lets me know that you've made it to the end of the video and i am very grateful and so moving on with the ending sequence if this video has helped you or you found it kind of entertaining then consider a like a sub a comment a pin a follow you already know what to do but with that being said as always thank you so much for watching and i will catch you guys in the next video bye bye